Let's talk about porosity. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things, all the bad things that make me. Let's talk about porosity. Let's talk about porosity. Okay, so you heard it. We're going to be talking about porosity today. How many times have you heard the term porosity thrown around when you're researching what to do with your hair, what's wrong with your hair, how to pick what hair products? Well, today, let's talk about actually what is porosity. So porosity is the hair's ability to absorb water or other chemicals into the hair shaft. Porosity is determined by your genetics. It's also determined by how much damage the cuticle layer has been subjected to. So for instance, chemical processes such as relaxers or even coloring your hair, that can increase the porosity of your hair. Or even daily maintenance such as shampooing or detangling, all of those can damage the cuticle layer which will then increase your level of porosity. Porosity is usually measured on a scale of low, medium, and high. And I guess you're wondering, where do I fall into that scale? So, this is how you know if your hair is highly porous. It can absorb a lot of water very quickly. Only problem is, it also releases moisture very rapidly. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, low porous hair has a very hard time soaking up water. That means if you get in the shower and it just feels like your hair can't get wet or it takes a long time to really get it soaked, you probably have very low porous hair. But the great thing about having low porosity is it retains a lot of moisture for a long period of time. I like to think of porosity in relationship to how a sponge works. So today I'm going to show you the difference between low porous hair versus high porous hair using regular kitchen sponges. I like to think of porosity in relationship to how a sponge works. A sponge is made to absorb and release water through its pores, almost just like hair. So I'm going to use these sponges today to demonstrate the difference between hair with high porosity versus hair with low porosity or what is considered to be resistant hair. First, we measured these sponges to make sure they were the exact same weight. The only difference between these sponges is that one sponge has a scrubber on one side. The scrub side is still porous, but it's less porous than the traditional side of the sponge. Therefore, the traditional sponge represents highly porous hair, and the scrubber sponge represents low porosity hair. We submerge the surface of these two sponges into separate bowls that both contain one fourth cup of water. We waited about an hour to see how much water each sponge would absorb. As you can see, the sponge with the scrubber only absorbed half as much water as the traditional sponge. This tells us that hair with low porosity has a problem absorbing moisture in compared to hair with higher porosity. Next, we wanted to see how fast these sponges would release moisture. So, we placed the sponges outside in the sun for about an hour. As you can see, after an hour, the traditional sponge released almost twice as much water compared to the sponge with the scrubber. This illustrates that hair with higher porosity loses moisture quicker than hair with lower porosity. Now that you understand the difference between low porosity and high porosity hair, hopefully you can identify what end of the spectrum your hair falls in. If you have highly porous hair, first try deep conditioning the hair to help repair or seal damaged spots on the cuticle surface. Secondly, you should always seal the hair with oil or silicone based products to help prevent moisture from escaping your hair after your regular styling regimen. Lastly, try incorporating an apple cider vinegar rinse every now and again to lower the pH of the hair which will help to close cuticles tighter and trap moisture in. If you have hair with low porosity 
or it's considered to be resistant type hair, you can help to infuse more moisture into your hair using a few different methods. First, try incorporating a steamer into your hair care regimen. Secondly, try using products that are rich in humectant such as propylene glycol or glycerin which will help to draw moisture from the air to the hair. Lastly, maybe try soaking the hair in alkaline water for a few minutes just to slightly increase the pH of the hair, which in turn helps to open the cuticle more and allows you to infuse more moisture directly into the strands of the hair. So if you have any more questions about porosity or how to determine how porous your hair is, visit me at sisterscientist.com or on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter.